It's getting hot in here. Because I have Corbuillon boiling. Because we're making lobster rolls today from scratch. Welcome to AZ Cook's Instagram Live Edition. And it is getting hot in here. It's summertime. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to be lounging around somewhere, the gentle breeze blowing on them, feeling just a little bit of sunburn from a day at the beach and chowing down on a beautiful, beautiful lobster roll. We are going to get to that. We're going to get to your questions. We're going to get to more conversation. Uh, some other things that are coming up this weekend, like the Emmys on Sunday. Congratulations to Intuitive Content. Uh, our production company was nominated for two Emmys. Uh, one for uh, Best uh, Travel Show uh, for Zimmern List, and uh, I was nominated for Best Host, so we're really, really excited. Good luck to all of the people. They divided the, the daytime Emmys up into like 100 different uh, nights this year, uh, but you can just Google it. I think it's daytimeemmys.tv or some such thing. We'll post it in my uh, social later on, so people who want to watch uh, can do so. I know the Emmys people would be thrilled. You'll see lots of your favorite uh, stars. I'm actually, there are presenters. I'm going to present three awards uh, this year, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, some unfinished business from last week. Uh, four lies and the truth, three yeah. lies and the truth, total of four. Uh, so a lot of people uh, guessed wrong. Um, the, uh, I was a child star in New York at the Light Opera of Manhattan, a Gilbert and Sullivan repertory uh, company. Uh, I do collect 19th century maps and historical prints. I do collect uh, guitars and have some pretty cool ones in my collection, including one of Paul McCartney's and one of Walter Becker, the late guitarist from Steely Dan, who's uh, one of my favorite guitar players. Um, and while I have played uh, in some poker and blackjack tournaments. And while I love to play cards and I love Vegas and I love going to the casino a couple times a year and I play cards with my friends, I am not a, uh, have never played in a professional tournament. That was a complete and total lie. So if you guessed that, you guessed uh, correctly. Um, let me get my lobster. This is A live lobster, um, one and a quarter to one and a half pounds, Omaris Americanus. Uh, this is what is typically referred to as the main lobster. Um, it is a beauty. Now, uh, lobsters have been enjoying a little bit of a uh, renaissance over the last uh, seven or eight years. Uh, we've seen incredible seasons. Um, and now, of course, uh, the, basically the entire seafood industry uh, in America is shut down. Why? 75%, a little bit more than that, but 75% is a good number. 75% of all the seafood that comes to America taken out of waters, you know, aquaculture and wild, what we take in and what we import is consumed in restaurants and a couple other places outside the home. Which means that while we love our seafood because we're the fifth largest importer in the world of seafood, uh, we don't consume as much of it as we should for, for our health, for our well-being. And while uh, 15 years ago, lobster was very expensive relative to other things that come out of the ocean right now, there are tremendous deals on lobster. And the deals are even steeper right now. Um, I've ordered lobster from a couple of different seafood companies on the East Coast. Once you get up above, I think, 50 or $75 in your, uh, in your checkout cart, uh, shipping is free, it's overnight. Uh, lobsters, bass, bluefish, mussels, clams, oyster, everything from the East Coast, I mean, you know, <laughs> you name it, it's at a reduced price. So uh, please go and Google places and order seafood from the place that you feel good about doing it uh, from. And I don't mean to leave West Coast seafood people out of the picture too. Same thing on the West Coast. Um, from spot prawns to Dungeness crabs to, you know, uh, halibut, you name it. What comes out of the West Coast is absolutely phenomenal and should be supporting them uh, as well. Now, 
First thing that I wanna do is I wanna get my lobster cooking. I have carrot, celery, onion, white wine, and peppercorns in my water. Uh, I've been boiling it for a while so that the flavors all come out of there so I have a really nice uh, cor bouillon going. Um, some people like to put the lobster right into the pot. Other people, I am one of them, uh, sometimes will place a lobster in the freezer for 15 minutes, goes right to sleep, doesn't freeze the meat or the shell, and you can place it right in there. Lobster doesn't know what's going on. Uh, other people prefer to place a sharp knife about a half inch back uh, from the eyes at the top of the carapace and just simply insert that knife straight in and the lobster is dispatched. Now, one of the issues with that methodology is that it's not for people who are freaked out uh, by the legs moving and stuff like that because while the lobster is, you know, an X lobster at that point, um, the, the legs and the tail will sometimes kick around because its electrical system is still engaged and that disturbs people. If you do not like that, but you wanna cook lobster, just stick it in the freezer for 15, 20 minutes. Um, works really, really well. Anyway, um, this lobster is now gonna cook in this really, really sturdy corbouillon. I mean, I can smell the carrots and the celery and the onion and the peppercorns and the white, and the white wine. It's beautiful. We're gonna just turn this up a little bit because I put a big, you know, pound and a half sized uh, cold thing into a half gallon of boiling water. Uh, but you can see, because I had it boiling for a while before, the thermal momentum is still up. So that lobster is cooking right now. It's another reason why, why you wanna make sure that your water is got at a nice raging boil uh, when that happens. So anyway, lobster is in there cooking cook it for eight, nine, ten minutes, depending on how uh, big it is. I'll show you when it comes out another sign to tell when it's done. Uh, if some of the liquids in the lobster come out at the space where the tail meets the top of the carapace, the upper shell, uh, you will sometimes see some uh, collecting of white coagulated juices from the lobster, and that's another indication that the temperature inside is sufficient enough to cook it. Uh, next thing that we want to do is want to toast our buns. Um, so one thing that is easy to find back home where I'm from on the East Coast and is impossible to find uh, here in Minnesota are uh, proper East Coast hot dog and other sausage buns that have a nice flat side to them. So what I do is I just feather a knife, serrated please, across the end of it, and just take that off. And the reason is I wanna get a super nice, toasty, buttery, really nice, toasty, buttery, grilled cheese bread texture, right? For those of you that don't cook a lot, that's always what people tell me when I describe it and then they look and they go, oh, like a grilled cheese. So I'm like, yeah. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna toast these for a couple minutes on each side so they get a nice, crispy, crunchy exterior that's buttery and the, the roll gets warm. Now there's two ways uh, to really make a lobster roll. Uh, well, <laughs> you can make it a thousand ways. You wanna add celery, carrot, onion, salt, pepper, a little curry powder, vadovan, French vadovan curry makes a delicious lobster roll. It's more like putting a flavored lobster salad into a roll. If you wanna make a what is conventionally referred to as a New England or Maine style lobster roll, there's only two ways to do it. One, you pull the meat from the lobster, you let it cool to just about warm, you stuff it in the bun, and it has to be the, the chopped meat from an entire lobster, and then you pour two or three tablespoons of hot salted butter on top of it. That's one way, okay? Uh, who does that phenomenal? Reds in Wiscasset, Maine, makes a phenomenal lobster roll that way. Uh, world class, one of the top five, easily. Um, 
Five Islands Lobster Company, Days, two other places in Maine that I love. My father used to live in Maine. Uh, so uh, the last eight, 10 years of his life. And so I would go up there all the time and I feel like Maine, even though I'm a New York, Minnesota person, my third home has been and always will be in the state of Maine. Uh, so to everyone down east, love you. Uh, so one of the things that I wanna do is um, tell you about the other way that these lobster rolls get made, which is, right, butter, hot butter, reds and muscassin. A little bit of mayonnaise, period. Maybe some salt and pepper, right? A, a, a teaspoon of celery or minced onion. I mean, just the barest amount, just to pull out the flavor in the mayonnaise and accentuate what goes on the lobster. And by the way, there should be no mayonnaise. If you took all of the lobster salad that you make with the mayonnaise out of the bun, you shouldn't see any pooling up anywhere. Just enough to gloss it. Super, super, super important. Sarah, so, yeah. They're asking how long does a lobster cook for? Well, that depends on how many are in the pot, how quickly it came back to a boil, and the size of the lobster. I'm doing a single uh, lobster. It's between one and a quarter and one and a half pounds. That's the size we ordered and it came over to the shop. Um, so that'll take between eight and 10 minutes. The safest thing to do with all lobsters, and I, and I tell people this all the time, uh, whether you're boiling or whether you're steaming them, make sure they're in a single layer in the pot or in the uh, pan. Another great way is to do it in a roasting pan with aluminum foil across the top inch and a half of boiling water and throw it in for 25 minutes in a 350 degree oven. It basically steams and boils in there. Um, but let it go for eight or 10 minutes, then just turn off the heat and let it sit in there like a tea bag for four or five more minutes so that heat penetrates the shell. Because one thing about lobster is that I can't have you take it out of the fridge and tell you to have it come to room temperature like a steak, right? Or even shrimp right? Or chicken. So that it's cooking right away. So it always takes a while, right? And the interior of that lobster is uh, 34 degrees because it's been in the refrigerator uh, for a couple of hours here. So I want to look and see, let me see if I have a, my handy dandy tongs available anywhere. Boy, this is what I'm reduced to these days. Um, okay, so I can see here, do you see that coagulant? That little white stuff there? When I start to see it, that white coagulant come out here, I know that the inside of that lobster is cooked 100%. So I'm just gonna let that go for another minute or two, right? Um, but yeah, the, the tea bag methodology is foolproof because you're allowing it to come to a temperature where you know it's cooked or almost cooked and then it sits in the water. It's not gonna get waterlogged. The meat itself is already cooked. You just do that for four or five minutes, then let it rest room temperature, dry out a little. You're gonna be absolutely fine. Um, you question. Get, you're getting a lot of hellos from Brazil, Greece, and Dominican Republic. And oh. Matthew Jennings wants you to know that he's watching. Matthew Jennings, I dated him in high school. Uh, Chef Matt Jennings, uh, now living in Vermont with his lovely family and his incredibly talented wife, uh, Kate. And as I always like to remind people whenever the subject of Matt Jennings comes up, this is one of the most awarded and highly regarded culinarians in the country. He's not even the best cook in his own house. That title would belong to his wife, Kate, who has got serious chops, but doesn't feel the need to tell everyone about it. Can you I kid I kid him because he's one of my best friends. Continue. Can you overcook a lobster? Yes, you can overcook anything, especially in water. You know, it's a great question. Many people think that like because pot roast is cooked in, you know, braised or whatever brisket or lobster is boiled or steamed, that you can't overcook it. Oh my god. It is one of the easiest things to overcook. How many times have you had a pot roast or brisket that's just like dry and you can barely chew, chew through it? The same thing with lobster. Matt says you love Kate more than he does. It's not. That's not, that's not true. That, that woman, I know, don't make me embarrass you because you've told me how much you love your wife. Do not, there's, 
there's like 50,000 people watching and another million will see this over the next week. Do you really want to have that conversation now, my friend? Because I'll have it. I'll have it. No <laughs> one loves your wife more than you do, and, and as it should be. Although there are legions of us who are big fans of hers. Okay. Now, literally, in the last 60 seconds, you could start to see some of the coagulants come out of the lobster. And I am just going to plunge this right now into a bowl of ice and water. And I'm gonna turn off the heat on, ooh, one of my shells came off. Let's put that in. Now, why do I do this? Well, first of all, if I have the time, I would do my boiling and resting the day beforehand, put the lobsters in a plastic bag once they're room temperature in the refrigerator, let them chill, and then go through my whole cracking process to extract the meat. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to do it now. And kind of like um, dealing with a roast turkey or a roast chicken, if I start doing it right away when it comes out of the oven, the outside of it is so hot that I'm gonna do all that sort of like owie, owie thing on TV, and I really don't wanna do that. Um, the whole point of this is for me to show you how to do it. So, you know, two minutes in there while I get a plate for our lobster rolls and uh, it'll be cooled sufficiently for me to hold the shell and extract the meat, right? So let me get a plate, give me one sec. Okay, so I will say, uh, I will say one thing. Where's the, ooh yeah, there we go. Just prop those open a little bit, okay. Um, next thing that we wanna do. They're asking if the water was seasoned. It was with white wine, peppercorns, celery, carrot, and onion. As a matter of fact, we call that in the biz. Poor bouillon once it's all thrown together, but there's all of that delicious veg. Now, you can taste the white wine and all those vegetables and peppercorns in the lobster meat. If you have a lobster that you just steam in plain water versus one that you maybe poach in a corbouillon, you are going to taste that, that corbouillon in the lobster meat, guaranteed. Um, now I'm gonna prop this up out of the ice into this bowl and let that just sort of drain there for a second while I make my uh, little salad here. Um, now, I happen to be a huge lover of celery. Anyone who's watched uh, episodes of AZ Cooked or any of my cooking classes or looked at recipes online, and I love the leaves. I just love the crunchy, flavor of celery and it's really strong flavor as well and I just put about a third uh, of a cup in there I put a squeeze and I mean it was like quarter teaspoon maybe a half teaspoon of lemon juice I am going to put and to my father, this was sacrilege. My father would do it with just the celery. I have found in my home that just a little bit of minced onion, like a tablespoon or so, sometimes I'll do a shallot if I don't want to do a whole onion, but I'm gonna be cooking later on. So it's okay if I mince up an onion. because I'm just looking for a super fine healthy tablespoon of onion. Now we are making lobster salads with a little bit of salt in there. And most importantly, because nothing goes better with mayonnaise and shellfish than black pepper. 
I just love the flavor of mayonnaise, black pepper, and shellfish. In fact, there's a hot mayonnaise and black pepper sauce for shrimp that comes off the grill that I am absolutely nuts about. Maybe we should do that in a couple of weeks here. Um, all right, so first thing that we wanna do, take our claws off. Next thing that we went, the reason we want those off is that we don't like cut ourselves or nick ourselves on a shell because our next move is going to be to separate the tail from the head and we just do that by gently twisting. Oh, a beautiful female lobster with roe. And look at this, see this is, this is why I should have rested. The meat is perfectly cooked, but the lobster coral would be red but it's not, it's black, but that's fine because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that. What happens if you unshell it and then it's undercooked? Oh, if it's under, you can just throw it into a warm oven, you know, steam it for another minute or two. Don't microwave it, put it in a 250 degree oven for five, seven uh, minutes. This is really a very, very simple issue. Uh, can you grab me a uh, bowl? Well, actually I don't need one. I've got a big one right here. And I'm going to save the uh, the row. So you can crack this with your hands. Um, there's videos on our website of me doing that. The, the problem with cracking it with your hands is that you can't withdraw the tail as elegantly as if you cut it. And because it has that beautiful piece of row attached to it. I want to save some of those juices. I also save my shells. By the way, very, very important because the shell allows me to make sauces and soups with it even when it's cooked. And I'm just cutting through into this tail so I could slide the egg out. And there it's half cooked half raw. So you can see, I actually, you, you wanna know what the stupid move was? And Matt will back me up on this. The stupid move, because the lobster meat is cooked, was I should have looked to see if it was a male or female. If I saw it was a female, I would let it go for an extra 60 or 90 seconds. Um, and the reason being is that you're gonna have roe in a female, it's just gonna take a little extra time to cook. So all I'm gonna do is dice this lobster meat by the way, if you love the people that you are feeding, you will dice this and you will do a good job cutting it up. Why? Because there's nothing worse than biting into a lobster roll and this long piece of lobster comes up. That's how you show people that you do not care for them. I wanna show people that I do care for them. Uh, take off the small piece of the small claw. Let that liquid get out there. Flat of the knife, crack it down. This is, you know, small lobsters have thin uh, shells. Are you gonna keep your core bouillon for later for soups or something? Do you know something? We were talking about that earlier. Um, when I have room, I have a chest freezer at home and yes, when I cook lobsters in it, I would, because after I do three, four, five, six, if I was doing lobsters for a party, that becomes something that I then, I toast the shells and a little tomato paste, add a little bit more wine or brandy and dump this in instead of water to make my lobster stock because it's so, so lobstery. So the answer is yes, but you just have to have the space in your freezer uh, for it. It's like reusing oil when you're frying, it's smart to do. do now this, this larger shell, right, is thicker, but it's the same thing. Place it down there and just give it a good push. Then you can take the entirety of it and in the larger shell, there is a feathery bone that comes out from the center when you pull from between the claws, right? If you try to pull it the other way, it will not come out. Why? Because you're holding onto this part and you can see it's got these little feathers on the side 
and you can't pull it back that way. Um, super easy. The knuckles are not going into my lobster salad uh, for my lobster rolls. And the reason is, is that I am going to eat those later. <laughs> what do you do with the shells? I put them in a bag in my freezer along with all my shrimp shells and other bits of crab shells, things like that. And when I have four or five pounds of them, I caramelize them in tomato paste, add more vegetables, add seafood, uh, fish stock that I've already made or water or poaching liquid or steaming liquid from other lobster excursions. And I make a really rich uh, shellfish stock. And uh, then I use that for risottos and soups and things like that. Uh, all right. Mayonnaise. For something this big, one heaping spoonful. And combine. Mm. The crunch of this, look, everyone has their way of doing, this is how I make it in my home which is different than my three favorite places to get them in Maine. But that's why I go to those places. I, I specifically don't do the butter. Oh, I should say in the city of uh, Portland is a restaurant called Eventide, one of my favorite restaurants in America. And at Eventide, they serve their lobster rolls small in a uh, steamed uh, Chinese bun uh, that they make themselves from scratch and they cook the lobster in brown butter and then pour brown butter over the top, period, which is a nice uh, twist to it. And for I know there's people uh, watching who have uh, dined at Eventide. Is that your most memorable rest, like restaurant where you had a lobster roll? No, I mean, my, I, I have to say I'm, I'm really lucky. You know, I grew up on the East Coast. Um, there was a place w growing up on Montauk Highway called Lunch, the Lobster Roll. That was its name. Uh, it had a big sign that said Lunch. Um, back in the 60s, uh, my, uh, my mom, and her friend, Ellen, would take myself, when we were very young, and Ellen's son, David, and his sister, Elizabeth, to lunch the lobster in the middle of the week while the dads were working in New York. They'd come out on the train on Fridays. And uh, that would be um, a regular place for me. And... I don't consider it to be the best lobster roll that I've ever had. Uh, and certainly these days it's more of a commercial spot. Uh, they still have a good lobster roll, uh, but it is not the, the quality there. It's the memory and the feeling of those days. So there you have it, simple, easy, make it however you want it, but I'm telling you right now, this baby right here is a really nice lobster roll. Uh, questions, comments, criticisms, we have a couple of minutes. Do you prefer cold or hot lobster roll? Both. And this is, this is a true story, by the way. I will eat multiple lobster rolls a day when I'm in Maine. Um, I will drive up to Red's in Wiscasset. I will eat a lobster roll, a couple of little goodies, shop around the town, maybe do some things on the way back, stop at a swimming hole, stop in a little harbor, jump off the end of a dock, cool off, and then have stop at Five Islands or Days on the way back into Portland, have a lobster roll, steamers, corn, just to put the whole feed bag on one more time. Could you do this recipe with shrimp? Mm. Mm-hmm. Matt says he approves. Here's the deal.
when you're up in Maine, New Haven, any of the coastal communities from Boston north, every crab shack, lobster shack, clam shack that you stop at has a lobster roll, a clam roll, a crab roll. There's, you can do this with crab meat. You can do this with shrimp. You can do it with leftover salmon comes off the grill. It's a great way to make a little quick sandwich. There is something about a lobster roll that is just elegant and decadent and just hits all the right buttons. What's your favorite side dish for this? Chips, fries, cheese curds? <laughs> Not cheese curds. Um, well, I mean, you, you're, you're in New England, so uh, fries or potato chips would be apropos. Um, however, my favorite side dish to uh, a pair of small lobster rolls or a big lobster roll is a two pound bag of steamers and a half cup of drawn butter. What are the best summer dishes? Mm. That's not too broad or roomy a question, but I do have a good answer for you. If you go to andrewzimmer.com, we have holiday recipes, summer desserts, summer recipes, barbecue and grilling tips for summer. We have so much in the summer category. Keep you busy for the rest of the warm weather months. How often should you sharpen your knives? Well, I hone my knives um, every time I'm done using them. So, well, this is dirty, um, but uh, if I'm, when we finish today, I will draw my knife 15, 20 times on each side on the steel. And I'll usually do that before I get started. And the reason is that puts a nice, uh, it hones it. Sharpening is something that you do every couple of months if you use them a lot. I sharpen my own knives on a grinding stone. If I have a nick or a ding, I send it out uh, to, there's a handful of great places around the country that you can mail it to if you have like some sort of expensive, custom made knife that has to be dealt with by an expert, you gotta send it out. If you have a commercially available knife, oftentimes the butcher shop uh, or even the butcher counter at your local supermarket um, has a service where you drop them off and a couple days later you pick them up. But it's important, that's when you need to put a new edge on it, right? You do it yourself on a stone or send it in. They're saying, are there any spices you can add to this recipe? Oh, at the top, I mentioned curry to me. Any kind of seafood salad, shrimp, crab, lobster, you wanna add, you wanna take it in a whole different direction. Curry, 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 curry every time. And French Vatavan curry, it's a beautiful pale green. It's a stunning, stunning uh, choice. Favorite 90s song? Favorite 90s song? Hard for me to remember that decade. Um, I don't remember the 80s, but I remember a lot of Talking Heads albums and Clash albums that came out in the 80s that really got me going. 90s, what came out in the 90s? What, was that Duran Duran's decade? Hard for me to remember. Do you approve of Old Bay seasoning for this? <sighs> wow, the controversial question gets asked. Um, if you're out on the Eastern Shore in Maryland, everything gets hit with Old Bay, either in the water or sachet or seasoned afterwards, or put in the mayonnaise or sandwich. If you were down in Cajun country, uh, and really now Cajun country has expanded. I mean, it's now not just central Louisiana. I mean, it is down to New Orleans. It is all the way down into Houston, Texas, and all the way across into uh, uh, Alabama and Mississippi and through the Florida panhandle. Everyone loves Cajun food. And so you will get uh, Zatarin's most famous brand, crab boil, shrimp boil, seafood boil in everything. Both of those things take your seafood into a flavor direction that it can't pull away from. It's delicious, I love it. There are tons of recipes that I make all the time when I'm doing a big shrimp boil. 
uh, with sausage and potatoes and corn at the end of the summer. When I'm doing um, a uh, crawfish boil or something, it has to have those flavors. When I'm doing uh, hard shell blue crabs uh, for friends and we're hammering them at the picnic table, of course I throw Old Bay in, but not for this. Doesn't mean it's not delicious. Uh, we are out of time. I cannot wait uh, to speak with you. Oh, next week, uh, I will uh, not be here. Um, we are taking the week off for uh, a holiday. We will be back the following Thursday with AZ Cooks Live on Instagram and YouTube. Um, Vicki, why don't we post a classic AZ Cooks recipe? video next Thursday. We'll find a classic from the archives. We have hundreds of them and we'll put that out next Thursday. So those of you who have uh, a desire to see something that's summary, we'll put that out for you. Uh, stay close to my social. We'll put out info about the Emmy Awards on Sunday night. Is there anything that I am forgetting? I think that's it. Thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day.